Hi, in this video, I'll be covering how to highlight a table cell based on a drop-down selection. Sharing a data table with someone and wanting to quickly highlight a cell based on some drop-downs, this could be a situation where you've got a dashboard or report and you need users to find the main data point after they select something. This video will show you how simple it is to create a drop-down, not only one, but two. And once a choice is made, it will quickly highlight that part of the table to show the important information. It's easy to do, and I'll even cover how simple combinations work. Let's check it out. So we're gonna highlight one of these cells based on our drop downs here. So let's say, for example, I choose the month of June and I want that last item, item five. Once I select item five, look, it becomes yellow. It's all highlighted. I can choose other ones, maybe March, maybe item three, and that's gonna be highlighted. So how do we do this? Let's go check it out. So here I'm in a new sheet, and what we wanna do is for our drop downs, we wanna get our month and items. Pretty easy to do this. All you need to do is bring up the data validation feature. You can go under data and then go to data validation and that's gonna bring up the data validation window. I like to use the shortcut key, Alt DL. It's gonna bring up the same data validation window. Go to any value. We're gonna select list. And for the source, all we need to do is just highlight our area here. Press okay. And now we have our list. Let's do the same thing for item. Click on my cell there, Alt DL and select list. My source here, select my item one to five, A2 to A6, click OK, and we've got our items. So to get the highlighted area, we're doing the intersection. Let's say, for example, we're doing January and uh, item one. So we won't do the intersection here. So it's basically an intersection of Jan and item one. So if we look at Jan and item one here, maybe what we want to do is we want to combine these two together. It doesn't matter if it's item one Jan or a Jan item one, but I'm going to do Jan item one since this is month and item. So combine that, that should equal to the values here. If this says Jan and that says item one, the combination of that should match that. What does that mean? Let's say, for example, I do this. I do equals Jan and combine that with item one. Does it equal this combined with item one? Press enter and it's true. If I change this to something else, it's gonna be false, right? Go back to Jan. Go back to Jan. What we want to do is have that apply for all of these cells. So I'm going to take you through the logic. This works here for this cell, but what about the other cells? And we can see if we copy it over the other cells, it gets broken. Um, let's say, for example, we go February and item one, it gets broken, right? So what we want to do is make sure that we have the absolute cell references mapped out correctly. And when we copy it across the different cells, when we use it in our conditional formatting, it then starts to apply. So we need to do this. We need to put relative cell reference in here. So the dollar signs have to be in front of letters or numbers. In this first case, B1, we want to make sure that row one stays static. So we're going to put a dollar sign in front of the one there. So when it gets copied over, it will be C1, D1, etc. But for here, what we want to do is make sure that the column stays the same. So we want it to have the dollar sign in front of the column. So what that's going to do is make that static, but the other things change. It's going to go from A2 to A3, A4 as you copy this down. Now for this here, that's going to stay static for both the letter and the number because we don't want that to change when it gets copied over. These are going to be the same. That's a static cell. So I'm going to select those both and just press the F4 key. And what it's going to do is it's going to put the dollar signs in front of the letters and numbers for both of them. If I cycle through it, I've press F4 a couple of times, you can see that it puts the dollar sign in front of the different areas. But we want it both in the number and the letters. Press enter. And now all I need to do is I can, I can copy it down five rows. So let me copy it down five rows. And you can see that it's false here. And if I select item five, you'll see that it turns true here and that one turns false. Let's copy all this over now and see if it works for June. So I'll select all of that, move it over and let's see, I select June. Let's look at June item five and we see that's turned into true. So that particular instance of that formula when copied over, it's gonna work for us when we do our conditional format. So I'm just gonna take this first part here, control C to copy and now I'll press escape to get out of there. Select my row of range of data here and bring up conditional formatting. Go to home, conditional formatting, and new rule. And for the new rule, I'm gonna use a formula to do it. 
paste that formula in there, Control V to copy, and let's just make that yellow like I did in the example. So I'm going to click on Format, Fill, Yellow, click OK, click OK, and now it works. You can see that it works there. If I select something like February Item 3, select February Item 3, you can see that it's moved that particular cell that's highlighted. And you can see it shows up here too. So I can get rid of this. I don't need this anymore. Press delete. And now when you do your selection here, if you do have a dashboard or something like that, or you want your users to make some selection and it highlights it easier, makes it more visible, this is the way that you can do it. Hopefully you saw this solution as a simple and quick way to pinpoint important data you need users to see from their selections. The visuals of adding color help you focus on the right parts from the sea of data in this table. Hope this solution works for your unique situations. To see more videos like this, click the banner at the end. Still here? Well, here's a joke. What do you get when you cross a cow and a duck? Milk and quackers. <laughs>